This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to just take a moment and welcome all of you, all of us, to this time of worship. You know that we have uh, been changing some of the ways that we share the service online, and more recently we've gone to live streaming. So I also welcome those who are worshiping with us online. Um, a few announcements. So um, there is information, if you didn't see it in the newsletter, it's in the bulletin about the events coming for Holy Week and also some fun things that we're going to be doing on Easter Sunday. So just invite you to um, participate, anticipate um, some, some meaningful and good things. So thank you for just taking the time to read about those. Um, I, will re- I will remind you about our backpack food of the month, the little vegetable cups. You saw pictures up there on the screen as the, as the announcements went by, so we welcome your help with that. And then there, was, there is a survey in your bulletin. You also may remember that we have talked about reimagining some of the, the ways that we uh, kind of have longed to get back to uh, times of fellowship and sharing meals and food and fun things together. So there's a group that's gathered, and they're, they are um, helping us with that. And so they have all kinds of ideas, some that came out of our brainstorming time, some that they had themselves or have heard from you. So they want your input. Um, and your, I don't know if, if I need to say anything. I, I, would, I would say um, we've probably missed out on this so much that you might want to just like check everything that's on the list. <laughs> but really, um, your faves... Um, and the ones that would be most meaningful or doable for you. And it's not tied to any day or any time of day. So just kind of free yourself from that, well, if it's on Wednesday, I just can't do it. So, but it's not tied to a day or time. So just um, your input is welcome. And there's a basket in the back. Um, there's also a way for you to do it online. And just speaking of forms, um, there are Easter lily order forms in the back if you would like to do that. Does anyone have anything else you would like to lift up or share? Okay, let's pray. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Um, I changed something in the order of the worship. The choir anthem is not going to be where it is in the order. It's going to be closer. It's going to be before we share communion. So I just, just so you know, <laughs> let's pray. Oh God, thank you for the gift of this day, for life and breath and health and just the freedom and ability and willingness to be present this morning. Best of all, you are present this morning with us. I pray that with all of who we are, we are open to your spirit among us. Amen.
Please rise as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Six days before the Passover, Mary poured perfume on Jesus' feet and then wiped his feet with her hair. The prayers of the saints are like the rising incense before God. Today, let us raise a praise that touches the heart of God. God, we offer our praise as a sweet fragrance that aspires to heaven. Our hymn of praise is found on page 126 in your hymnal. Sing praise to God who reigns above. Will you join me in the prayer of confession? Lord, you meet us when we feel alone in the wilderness, promising that no matter how bleak the moment seems, you are about to do a new thing. We confess that far too often we see the world through a lens of scarcity closing our eyes to the expansive possibilities you call us toward. Forgive us when we fail to follow your ways. Remind us of your expansive hope and journey with us as we seek to share your love with others. Amen. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? 
God is always doing a new thing among us, and God is always offering forgiveness. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in the prayer for illumination? Holy God, we humbly approach your word today. Help us not only to hear the message you intend for us, but to embody your word in our daily lives and action. Amen. Our Psalter is Psalm 126. It can be found in the hymnal on page 847. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. Those who go forth weeping, bearing the seed for sowing. The children may come up for children's time. Good morning. It's good to see everybody. How you doing? Doing okay? Yes? Okay. So in the story that we have about Jesus this morning, um, it's a story about when um, his very good friend Mary anoints his feet and um, with oil. And so um, just to say a little bit about that, because that might sound strange because we don't do that kind of thing too often. But when people walked around in, the, in what was like a desert kind of climate or wilderness, and lots of times they wore, hold on, lots of times they wore sandals, so their feet would get, you know, yucky, right? And so when they would enter somebody's home, it was uh, a custom to help to wash their feet and to dry them off. But then Mary kind of does this extra special thing of this very fragrant, um, wonderful smelling, almost like a perfume. And, and, so, and she anoints Jesus' feet, means she rubs, them, rubs it on his feet, I wanted to, and then it says, it says, then the fragrance filled the whole house. So I wanted to ask you about smells and things that fill the whole house, maybe, or just even just things that you love how they smell, or I don't know. What are some smells that you like, Audrey? Roses, yes. Roses have a beautiful fragrance, Joshua and then Khaleesi. Ooh, strawberries. You, you smell them when they're like on the plant or when you're about to eat them, like when you're clean. Well, From three rooms away, you can smell strawberries. Well, sometimes they are really fragrant. They smell really good. Yeah, you can smell really good. All right, Khaleesi. Watermelon, yum, very good. What are some other s scents or smells that you think of? Audrey, soap, okay, yeah. Do you have s the scent of soap on you? Okay, um, smells can be, um, can remind us of things, they can remind us of people. Okay, well, would it, is it appropriate to name it here? <laughs> a stinky smell. Yeah, some smells we don't like. Rotten fish. Rotten fish. Yuck. Well, I like normal fish. You like normal fish? Just the smell of it? Okay. Well, okay, well, you know what I think of when, when it talks about the, the fragrance filling the room is that I think of popcorn. Yeah. You know, my son, he's, he's an older 
he's older than you, he's not a kid anymore, but he's still my son. And um, he, last night, and th this really happened, I'm not making this up, last night, he, he's a night person, right? So he stays up late and he's 21, so he can do that. So Charles and I, my husband and I, were going to bed, so we say goodnight, and it's late, and we go to bed, and I'm in bed, and all of a sudden, I smell popcorn. And you know how hard it is to go to sleep when you smell something like that? And it's filled the house, and the kitchen is pretty far away from, from our bedroom. And anyway, so it was like torture. But um, so I just, I don't know if, if you think of a smell this, this, you know, for the people that were in the room with Jesus when that happened and it said the smell filled the house, I bet whenever they smelled that smell, they always thought about that time when Mary brought that ointment and anointed Jesus and shared it. I wonder if, if there is, if you could think of, if there was a smell that would remind you of Jesus or church or coming to worship do you think is there anything i don't know if there is or not i'm just wondering yeah jasper <laughs> you forgot okay anybody and there may not be khaleesi you're yes that green hand okay well you know later on we're gonna we're gonna share communion and maybe maybe what what do you smell right now your sweat okay well on that note maybe when we share in communion maybe the smell of bread or the smell of juice will remind you yeah okay so anyway well thanks for for talking about scents and smells and things that fill the house so let's pray together God, thank you for all of the smells that we can think of and name and that, um, I don't know, maybe we'll just connect them with this story of Mary doing a very wonderful thing for Jesus. Um, I thank you for these young ones and how they are learning the stories of Jesus and learning to live like and to follow Jesus. I pray a blessing on them in Jesus' name. Amen. So, thank you for being here. That could have gone awry in so many ways. Of course, I didn't think about it till we're in the middle of it, but oh well. <laughs> uh, let me read our gospel story. This is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. It says, Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure spikenard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to, to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept a, the common purse and used to steal from what was put in it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep, keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So it's, I want to go back for a minute to the place where it talks about that fragrance filling the space 
And, um, I, and I'm wondering um, what the scents and smells and things that come to mind for you, maybe as favorites or um, not so favorites, could be things that are food, but not always food. Like this one is a, is a perfume. Um, I shared popcorn, and that really did happen, and that really was torture. But the other things, food things that fill the room um, or the house, I thought of brownies or cakes or bread, you know, those things baking fill the room. Um, a particular scent that I love is the, is the smell of cooking celery and onions, particularly on Thanksgiving morning, anticipating that as a part of the stuffing, right? Or if you've ever traveled through the state, it used to be in the city of Jacksonville, you would drive through and there was a Maxwell House coffee plant or warehouse and you would drive through and you would smell coffee. Um, Non-food items. You know, recent, maybe not really recently, but there are, are candles and kind of room fresheners and uh, other, you know, things, and they, they label them fresh or the label rain. And I don't know about you, but those things never smell like what I would call fresh or what I would call the smell of rain. I do love that smell of that summer rain, just a light rain, not like the rain from yesterday or earlier, but um, yeah, the smell of rain. How about puppy breath? You know what puppy breath, if you know puppy breath, you know, I mean, if you know what, I mean, you know it, okay? I don't know if I said that. How about the smell of a dog's paw? I like that smell. So you're either, you know it or you don't. Um, and then I love the smell of lavender. That's a, a more recent favorite of mine. But maybe there's a scent or a, a perfume, a cologne, an aftershave that reminds you of a person, um, living or not. Um, and maybe when you s- smell that, you, that person comes to mind for you. Um, this is a beautiful scene and story and scent even, Um, this extravagant act of anointing Jesus' feet. Now, maybe you know or remember that this story appears in all four Gospels. But what's really interesting is that they all tell this story differently. Sometimes the woman is named, but not always. I think John is the only one that associates the story with Mary, of Martha and Mary, Jesus' good friend. Sometimes she's unnamed, this, this woman. And sometimes there's other people present. And sometimes, like in John here, it's just before the Passover. But in other, story, other gospels, it takes place in other times in Jesus' life. So you might find it meaningful to go look at the story, where the story happens in each of the gospels. Um, just to kind of notice those differences. Um, but here in John, I want to I remind us of, of kind of like what's happened leading to this moment. Um, context is always important, but I think it's especially important here because it gives us a sense of what it was like to be in the room that day. I mean, not just because of what Mary does, um, but I want to, so I want to tell you what happened in chapter 11. And, and I'll just, I'll read some of the, the headings that they have in this particular Bible. And it says, so chapter 11 opens with the death of Lazarus. Um, now, we just heard that Lazarus is at the table, the one whom Jesus raised. So Lazarus he's not only had this amazing thing happen to him, he now forever is known as Lazarus, the one whom Jesus raised from the dead. He has this new name um, and this whole new experience. Um, but you remember Jesus, they came to Jesus and said, this, your, your friend, your good friend, the one that you love has died um, or is dying and come and see him. And Jesus says, no, 
I've got some things to do and finish here. And he doesn't go right away. And Lazarus is his good friend. And so are Lazarus's sisters, Mary and Martha. And so when Jesus doesn't immediately stop what he's doing and come to see Lazarus, when Jesus encounters Mary and Martha, they give him a little piece of their mind. Why didn't you come? Or if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. Um, And, you know, it's, well, I don't know their tone when they see Jesus, but I would imagine um, they're either very disappointed or hurt, but Mary definitely sounds like it because Mary, what does Mary say? Um, Lord, if you had been here, if you had been here, you know, I can almost hear it. Um, But anyway, I got ahead. So the death of Lazarus, and then Jesus, in the middle of chapter 11, Jesus says this, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And it talks about that, um, this is where it has the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. (laughs) Um, There's a moment after Jesus tells them, look, um, it's it's okay, it's going to be okay. They don't believe him, and he goes, he, make, he starts to go towards, towards Bethany where Lazarus is, and, or where they have buried Lazarus, and that's when he encounters uh, first Martha and then Mary, and he sees Mary weeping. And he says, you know, take me to Lazarus. And, and, um, and that's also where it says, when Jesus is, is saying, Lazarus, come out, you remember what they say, no, he stinketh is what it says in the King James. Is there, he's been dead for four days. So talk about smells that fill the space. And, so, and then at the very end of that, it talks about how from that point, because he raised Lazarus from the dead, that they looked to plot to kill Lazarus because um, he was that story, that, that event just changed people's minds and they began to follow Jesus. Even more people were following Jesus. But it also, they started to plot to kill Jesus. Um, and the very part of it says, very end of that chapter says, um, Jesus no longer worked, walked out publicly because he knew of their threats. Um, and so, the, and then it says, now the Passover the, of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and were asking one another as they stood in the temple, what do you think? Surely he will not come to the festival, will he? The chief priests and the, and the Pharisees gave the orders that anyone who knew where Jesus was should let them know so they might arrest him. And then it's our story. Six days before the Passover, Jesus is on the way. And um, they give a dinner for him. So who's in, who's in the room? Lazarus, the one who was raised from the dead. Um, Martha. Now, in Luke, it's Martha and Mary, and the story of Martha serves, but Mary sits at his feet. But isn't it interesting that, it, that, well, that's not in this gospel, but it's Mary that's sitting at his feet. Martha is serving. Mary is sitting at his feet. Um, Judas is in the room. And the passage tells us, Judas, the one who was to betray him, and the one who's concerned about what Mary has done with this expensive perfume, not because he cared, but because he was a thief and he would steal from their common purse. So Judas's words just kind of fall flat. Um, why didn't we give it to the poor? Well, he doesn't care for the poor. Um, maybe Judas is envious of this, these relationships, the others that are in the room of Lazarus, and Martha and Mary, the ones he loved. Um, Mary 
is in the room. And think about, it was just a few days before this when Mary had prepared Lazarus for burial. Maybe these are some of the same spices, ointments that were used to prepare Lazarus. And now her brother is back to life and in the room. And Mary, who, um, ha- who is just overcome at the gift that Jesus has given her family, does this extravagant act of anointing Jesus' feet. And Jesus says, um, she's done it for me, anticipating where Jesus will walk in the days ahead, the week ahead. It's five days before his crucifixion. Um, Another thing that is in the week ahead for Jesus is that Jesus washes the disciples' feet in John's gospel. And so part of me wonders, I wonder if Mary's action towards Jesus is what prompted him to wash the disciples' feet at that last supper. So this act of Mary with this fragrance that fills the room, this extravagant act with this expensive ointment, spikenard. Um, So Mary, in this action that is a gesture of love, um, uninhibited, though the folks around her are probably very critical of her, um, she anoints him, and it's a gesture of love and care preparing Jesus for what's ahead. Jesus' own gesture of love in the days ahead. So what it makes me challenge all of us to think about what extravagant action might we do for those we love, those around us? How would this story prompt us to do an act of love, of generosity for someone else. And let me dare to suggest that it could be connected with the fragrances, those wonderful smells that we called to mind. I mean, I named mine. I'm sure some things came to mind for you. Um, But what, how would it, how could it relate to some of those scents and smells? Um, Coffee, popcorn, Um, sharing that time and that space with someone, Um, a loved one that we long for or that we miss. What can we do in their honor or memory? What extravagant gift can we share with someone to bless them? Who needs flowers or help in the garden? Um, Who would delight in receiving baked goods, brownies? Um, What gesture of love can you share? So just for the rest of our service, and especially as we come to share around a table um, together and calling to mind that experience, just be open to how God might be leading you to share in an extravagant way with a loved one. Let's pray. Oh God, for this story that might engage not just that sense of smell and fragrance and things that we call to mind, but just also the action of gathering around a table and just being able to see it and the closeness of folks that are there and foods that might be on the table. Just however you use this story and this time of worship and sharing in communion, use that um, to call us to serve and love in extravagant ways. So much of of who we are and how we live, we hold back 
I know we do. So God, help us, free us. Free us as Mary. Um, Extravagant acts of love and kindness and care and generosity. And God, as your gathered faithful followers, we pray together a prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our song of response is, Oh, how I, no, my Jesus, I love thee. I had the, I almost chose the other one. My Jesus, I love thee. It's, if you'd stand, it's number 172. We'll just take a few moments to see if there are joys and concerns or things that you know, things or people that you would li- like to lift up so that we can pray. Um, yeah, Thelma. Yes, yes. It's good to have uh, Mary and Carlisle Chambers and Nell Thrifts sister and brother-in-law. So good to have you with us. <laughs> Others? Uh, I know I wanted to share on the in the
AP. <laughs> so, yes. Um, another one, please pray for my colleague who has advanced cancer, also that I, that I su can support him sufficiently. And then another, um, for my future family and help with understanding myself and being a better partner to my loved one. So, um, all, you know, I share these each week and, and we have a bulletin board by the courtyard, and so they, they stay there for about a month, um, and so I would just invite you to go by and read them. Sometimes they get faded, but hopefully you can still read them and pray for these uh, requests from our neighbors, and these will go on the board. Um, so thank you. Kathy. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Holy God, in this season of Lent, ready us for Easter for the hope of restoration and new life in Christ. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer, that the earth be freed from our neglect and abuse, cleansed of poison and restored for the glory of all God's creatures. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer, that leaders exercise their power with care and humility, that greed give way to grace, that violence be put down in favor of peace. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. Lord, as we pray for those in other countries, so also we realize we can speak the same prayers for our own. We pray for Afghanistan, those with COVID-19 and COVID deniers, Israel and Palestine, refugees and offers of sanctuary, Ethiopia and Saudi Arabia, those flooded again and those with storm damage, Ukraine and Russia, Congo and Pakistan, Yemen during Ramadan, we pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. For youth who are navigating questions of identity, gender, and sexual orientation, and for the trusted adults who support them, we pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. For all drivers, passengers, and first responders, involved in the massive crash on the Pennsylvania interstate. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. That those in our community know health and safety and meaningful work, that neighbors support neighbors, no matter the fences we build. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died those who are dying, and those who are left behind to grieve. Gather all of us into your loving arms. We pray to you, O God. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, as a potter fashions a vessel from humble clay, you form us into a new creation. Shape us day by day through this spiritual season of Lent and Christ's companionship until all our acts are loving and just. And all God's people said, Amen. So i just like to take a moment in the service to thank you for your gifts, your financial gifts. Um, we don't pass the plate for our offering, but you know that there are baskets in the back. Um, now, I'm also grateful for the gifts of your time. So we mentioned the, the survey and those that are working to help us to reimagine. So thank you to all of those who are helping with that task. And for the other ways um, that you work and share behind the scenes and the gifts that you give of yourselves, thank you. Um, we'll stand and sing our doxology. Praise 
God. communion table is open to everyone present, just so you know. Um, 
we will share in the great Thanksgiving and the musical responses. Uh, they'll be on the screen and also in your hymnal. And just know that there's also a, um, some gluten-free, there's a gluten-free uh, wafer that if, that is, if you need that. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, your love remained steadfast. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast that renewed by your word and sacraments and fervent prayer and works of justice and mercy, we may come to the fullness of grace that you have prepared for those who love you. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to redeem the world. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in our likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He took upon himself our sin and death and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. We do this as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the cup, 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. I invite those who are helping to serve to come at this time.
Let's join together in the prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand. We are going to go out singing. Um, this one is in The Faith We Sing. It's When God Restored Our Common Life, 2182. called to mind wonderful scents and smells, but hear this, you are sent out to be the fragrance of Christ in the world. The fragrance of Christ in the world. So go and do that extravagantly, wonderfully, generously, and with great love. Would you go with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and go in peace. Amen.